I just look at all your faces and I may just stare you right in the face because I just love what God is doing in each of you. And as I just met some of you last night and as I listened to Mary, I thought, you know what, God is doing something in this room. He is doing something specific in each of your lives, and you're going to see a theme, I think, throughout the weekend. And I just want to thank the, the ladies who have put on Declare, because they have stepped out in faith to do something that's amazing for us. Yeah, yeah it was very amazing. And I want to honor the worship team, too. The worship is anointed by the of God. Can you have to that? Today, as I talk to you, that you would know more of the love of God for you. I am so overcome with how much God loves you. Like, I'm really, really overcome as I prayed for you leading up to this weekend. How much God is crazy about you. And I think some of you have come into this place having some questions and, and wondering if the thing you're doing is really what God called you to, or if you just made it up in your head. Don't leave me alone. Who else has thought that? Right? You're like, Jesus, is this you or is this me? Because it seems pretty crazy. And let me tell you, sometimes the crazier it is, the more I'm convinced it's really God and not me, right? So today, I want to talk to you, and for all of you that kind of need a title to the message, I'm going to be sharing with you what to do when you enter a new season. What to do when you enter a new season. And so I just want to open and just thank the Lord for being with us, and if you'll just pray with me. God, I thank you so much for new seasons. God, we thank you that your grace is enough for us. Thank you, God, that your power is overwhelming and you put us on our knees in humility with the privilege to serve you, God. God, we thank you for being here. Will you completely wreck us this morning? Wreck us with your love this morning, God. Speak to us in a fresh way. We hunger and yearn for you. You are magnificent and we honor you. We honor you, God, and exalt you, Jesus. Thank you. Let's pray in your powerful name. Amen. Um, you know, I was thinking of how the women are putting on a Declare conference and, and some of the projects that you're involved in, too. And it's kind of like a roller coaster, wouldn't you say? Like some, You remember when you were a little kid and you finally were tall enough, you hit that mark. You're like, I can ride the roller coaster now. You have stared at it for years and you're like, now I can ride that roller coaster. I am so excited, right? And, or maybe you have kids if you're not a roller coaster fan yourself. So your kids are so excited to grow up and do that. And they finally get on the roller coaster and you know that moment when you're going up and your back is like pushed back and you're checking the thing to make sure it's working and you're like, okay, this is gonna be great. I'm so excited. And then you get to the very top and you look down and you say, that word that Mary spelled yesterday. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh! What have I? Thanks for doing that. Second, really well. um, what have I decided to do? This is crazy. I don't want to do this, and you're terrified. And as it goes down, you are screaming, and all your friends on the ground are thinking, "They're having fun." Look at the and you're like, "No, I am freaking out. This is so scary." And then you come around and you start having some fun and you get off and all your friends and family are like, wasn't that fun? And for a moment you think, it was terrible. And then you go, yes, let's do it again. I want to do it again. And that is what it is walking with God, right? We go through a series of, oh my gosh, this is great, this is terrifying, and let's do it again. And so today I want to share, if you have your iPhones and our Bible um, out, I'm going to read from a story that we're very familiar with and walk you through three things that you need to do when you enter a new season. If we go to a the story of Abram, Abraham in Genesis 12, 12 1, it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. And I will bless all those who bless you, and in him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, at this point, Abram didn't know about offspring. He didn't know about taking over the land. He didn't know about his children being as many as the sands in the seashore. All he knew was God said, leave where you're at and go to someplace. Like, how many of you have thought, that's a little crazy? That's a, that's a little, like, but you know what? I actually think he might have had some innocent faith in that. 
Because what he had was, leave where you're at, but I'm going to do this, and I think that far away, and I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless everyone who blesses you. Every family on the earth is going to be blessed because of you. And I think he went, oh, yeah, I'm going. I'm going for that. And that's the first thing that God often does with us. About um, a year and a half ago, I was working for an organization, and I loved my job. As a matter of fact, I left Chicago, left my family, sold my house, left everything and came to Texas five years ago. I didn't know a soul. And I got here, and five, four years later, I was laid off. And I thought, okay, the Lord just basically said, you're done here, and you don't know where you're going. And so I really related to Abram, because I didn't know where I was going, and I didn't know what was next. And that was on a Friday. It's Sunday. I went to church, and I was driving to church, and I said, Lord, I know today's the day that the pastor is going to ask us about what to give to the kingdom campaign. And this is above and beyond your tithe and how much you're supposed to give towards things for the kingdom. And I said, Lord, I have no idea. I mean, you haven't told me up till now, and I don't know what you want me to give, but I can't even figure out what my year is going to look like. So whatever you say, I'll do it. Just whatever you say. So I get to church, and the pastor gives the, the sermon, and I was so compelled by this man who had promised God to give him a lot of money, and then he got laid off. And I thought, well, that's my story, just kind of in the reverse. And so as we all got quiet before the Lord, and I said, okay, Lord, whatever you want, I heard the Lord say, give me your severance. Y'all, I am single. I am in my 40s. I do not have a husband or a roommate to cover any of the bills, and I have just enough money to live for one month. And it reminded me of when Abraham had sacrificed Isaac, and he thought, well, that's fine. God, God's just going to raise him from the dead, right? That's what we assume he was thinking. Well, so I just assumed I'd get a job. Okay, y'all, I'm not working yet, and it's, this was March 2012. I'm going to tell you the story of the journey, because when God gave me a promise to take care of me, that was way before he asked me to get a severance. So when God gives you a promise, there is a journey until you enter into the promised land. And the first thing you need to do, the first thing is to say yes to God. Just say yes, God, I will do it. And just, you know, blind abandon, just say yes, Lord, because he's so faithful. So part of my journey started, and one day I was taking a walk with the Lord, and I was, uh, let me just stop and say this. I'm so not cool. I'm skipping over a lot of details, okay? There were a ton of tears in the, are you sure you're telling me to do this because this is crazy? And there were people, you know, saying stuff, and the enemy was interjecting, so I'm skipping that because of time today. But I was taking a walk with the Lord one day, and I said, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm just kind of thinking about your promises, and there's other things I haven't seen the answer to yet, and, and, you know, and I wasn't talking to him about the severance at all. That was just a dumb deal in my mind. But the Lord interjected my, my thoughts. I wasn't really praying. You know how you do that. You're just kind of thinking. And he said, Julie, are you going to give me your severance? I said, yes, Lord, but that's a dumb deal. I'm not even talking to you about that. And he said, well, why haven't you done it yet? And I said, well, because the paperwork had to go in, and, and then I have to get it, and I have to write the check and drop I mean, there's things that need to happen first. And the Lord said, Jill, that's exactly how my promises are. It is a dumb deal in my mind. There's just some things that need to happen first. And so with that, that helped me get through this next season. And so if we go back to the story of Abram, um, the second thing I want you to know is you need to embrace who you are in God. See, because then it says that he got to the land of the, of the Canaanites, and they were in the land. I mean, Genesis around 6 and 7. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And it goes on to say that he went from place to place and he kept building altars for the Lord. See, what Abram was doing is when he got to his promised land and he looked, he saw a bunch of people in the place that was supposed to be for him. So he had kind of a challenge, like leaving, but he also had a great promise. This is the first time he's hearing that he's going to have offspring. Like, he's still going, yeah, awesome. I don't know about these people in the land, but they're going to get out. And so he built an altar to praise <laughs> God. And so what you need to do when you're just entering into the place that you're supposed to be, maybe God's told you to do a blog that's just like somebody else who is all over the internet, and you're like, this is crazy. This, and God says, no, but this is what I've given you. And you don't worry about the people in the land. You just walk and think and praise him. I remember... Thinking I was kind of crazy. I take a lot of walks with the Lord. It's what you do when you don't have kids or husband or dog. And so, um, so I, you know, you think I'd be skinnier after all those works with the walks with the God. But so I'm walking and I'm and I'm just thanking Him for unemployment. I find myself going, God, thank you. 
I have so much free time with you. Thank you. This is awesome. And so that's what he did. He built an altar to the Lord. And it says in Romans 4, 20 and 21, no distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. He was fully convinced because he gave glory to God. His faith grew strong because he gave glory to God. And as we go on in scripture, we see that the very next thing that happens is Abram and Sarah end up in Egypt. And it says that there was a famine in the land. So Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there for the famine was severe in the land. And the story goes on to say that, um, <laughs> it just cracks me up because the son ends up doing the same exact thing. So anyways, sorry, bunny trail, rabbit trail. Um, but he goes to the land and he's going through and as he's seeing the Canaanites in the land, he's going, you know, they're kind of hungry. Okay, they're really hungry. Okay, this is starting to get scary because God, you promised me land that is not only occupied, but there is famine everywhere. So when he goes into Egypt, he says, you know what? I'm, I'm a little scared right now. So Sarah, just say that you're my sister and I'm not your husband because they're going to kill me because you're so beautiful. And what he does is he lets the spirit of fear in because of the lack that he saw. And when there's lack and you fo whatever you focus on, you give power to. So when he saw the lack, he let fear come in. And when fear came in, he forgot who he was and he forgot that he was going to inherit the land and that his offspring were going to take that land. He forgot who he was. And that's what happens. We forget who we are in Christ. We see lack and we let fear come in. See, fear is a real or perceived, it's an emotion of a real or perceived um, situation that we can't control. Fear is just, it's just an emotion. It's just, it's a spirit that comes on you that comes against your faith. And so, I just love how they kicked him out. <laughs> they were like, no, 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 you're cursing us. You just need to leave. And sometimes that's what your enemies do. They say, you know what? You're not acting like a Christian right now. Like, get out of here. You know what I'm saying? That when we're not fully who God created us to be, people will reject us. Because who you were made to be is awesome. It is awesome. Yay, God. He's so good. The spirit of fear and the root of all fear, anxiety, or worry is an orphan spirit. Has anyone ever heard of orphan spirit before? So, I, that was kind of new to me a few years ago when I first heard that. An orphan spirit is something that acts like and thinks like an orphan would. Someone who doesn't have a father. Someone who feels like their future is not planned, they have to be in charge of it. And that's what Abram did, went with me to Egypt and say, you know, you're my sister. An orphan thinks there's no one to take care of me, there's no provision, I'm not significant. Has anyone ever thought some of those things when they're trying to do the thing God's called them to do? I want you to be aware that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy in John 10.10. 10. When he comes to steal, that word actually is klepto, like kleptomaniac. If you're not paying attention and keeping your eyes focused on the things God's called you to, he's going to come and steal them from you. That's part of his plan. And if he can't steal them from you, then he's going to try and convince you to give it up. That's his second plan of attack and to kill. And destroy is to bring your enemies. And I don't have time to get into all that, although I really love John 10.10. 10. Um, but the misconception that you have, when you are, have a misconception about who you are, your faith is limited to those misconceptions. When you have a misconception of who you are, your faith is limited to those misconceptions. You know, part of, um, part of what I was going through in this season was very, very difficult. And it was months, it was all summer, um, that God was refining me and showing me my identity issues. I really struggled with performance, and I didn't realize that I was hating myself because I wasn't performing good enough. I just really feel like some of us struggle with that because you're gifted and you're talented and you're smart, and when you don't achieve the way that you have set out to achieve, you can be hard on yourself, and the Lord just wants to say, I'm so pleased with you. He's so pleased with every one of you. Everything you're doing for the Lord, you said yes, he's pleased with that. If you failed in faith and got back to it, he says, I'm so proud of you. Oh, he's so good. I told him I was my train of thought. so good. Okay, all right, all right, okay. Um, he's so glad because I have nothing funny to say in this whole sermon. It's really good. Um, so one piece that I didn't tell you was going back to giving my severance. 
I was at the church building uh, on a certain day having a meeting, and I um, got the check, and I put it in an offering box, and I walked to my car, and I got a phone call from another ministry that said, would you help us build a program like you built for that other organization? We want to, it, it was like your story. It was like, well, we'll put you on retainer every single month for the rest of the year. Y'all, it was like 10 times what I gave. Like, God is awesome. He did not fail me. But what I needed that I didn't know, because he gives us, in Philippians, I believe it says, he gives us what we need according to his riches. Not just our needs, but his riches. And so what he gave me was working 20 hours a month to pay for all my bills. But I had all the rest of the hours free to heal and deal with the performance thing and learn what he thought about me. And then believe that and ignore all the things I had heard for so many years of what I wasn't good at. Because after you're unemployed for about eight months, you start thinking they were right. You start thinking, maybe I'm really not good at that. Maybe I don't have a calling and a purpose. I know it sounds crazy, but y'all, I lost my whole community at work, my whole families in Chicago. I was so incredibly lonely. I wrote a series of blog posts on what I learned during this season, and one of them is, when will the loneliness end? Like, really? And then I started grieving more of, God, oh, where's my husband? I want children. I cried in a barbecue commercial. You know, so it's like a barbecue, and I'm like, I love that. You know, and I know there's cleanup and all that, and we fight over things with your husband, but, but I still, it was really a hard season for me. But as, um, now I'm going to have to tell this story. Okay, so um, one of the things that, that I think it's easy to do is just compare yourself to everybody else. And, um, and comparison, again, is just an identity crisis. Because when you know who you are, you're not worried that they have what you need and that they're keeping it from you. Because the Lord is for you, and he made you so incredible and so unique. And if you hear nothing else from this whole time, I want you to know that there is nobody like you. God gave you gifts and skills. And you're about to go to college, and you're about to do awesome things for God. You're about to meet people that will change your life forever. You're going to network with people. I'm sorry, this is extra. But you're going to network with people that you never imagined. And you've got like this incredible destiny for God. You're going to change the world. And there's somebody out there, and you're just starting. You've got this idea, and you came here this weekend saying, is this you, God? And he's saying, yes, it's me. Just take one step of faith, just one, and watch where he can take you. I'm telling you, this roller coaster is a blast. It is so fun. It starts with saying yes. Second, you have to embrace who you are in God. And the third thing that you need to do is go at the pace of God. See, when we think of Abram's story again, remember Ishmael and Isaac, and, and he didn't exactly go at the pace of God. Right? And he got ahead of God in this. But God is so faithful that he didn't shame him. He just still fulfilled his promise to him because God is a promise keeper. He's so good. I'm so grateful for the examples in Scripture where people follow God and then they freak out, you know, like Gideon. He's freaking out. Can I just say Jesus freaked out in the garden? He freaked out. Like so much of he was sweating blood. We are not alone. <coughs> about freaking out. There's no shame about freaking out. I think I do it a lot, so I'm really preaching myself. Um, he is so good in that way. Oh, um, There's something about process that I've really learned to embrace. See, we all want to go through the process because we want the breakthrough. But the breakthrough is not what we need to focus on. We need to focus on the Lord who will bring the breakthrough eventually. But I'm telling you, once you have the promise and then you, you know, you're looking at all this stuff and the famine and the land and the Canaanites and then you finally get into the promised land, you start right back over with another challenge from the Lord because he's bringing you from glory to glory and he's got great plans for you. And what you see is just a little, little piece of what he's doing in the kingdom. And his plans for you are not to just accomplish one thing. And so he doesn't want you to focus on the thing that you're set to accomplish, but focus on him. And when you focus on him, your relationship with him will deepen so much that you will be everything he created and redeemed you to be, and you will absolutely change the atmosphere. I just had this feeling like all these women in this room, if each and every one of you would embrace who you are in Christ and trust the process and all the things God is going to do with you through the process and take it at his pace, you will be so powerful. There are things in you that will come together with someone else, and when the body of Christ comes together, I am convinced that we can change the world. I am convinced that I can change the way pe single people think with single matters. See, by the time December came around, 
um, that client thing was ending, and so I went right back into fear. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? January is around the corner, and I have no income again. And so in December, we have to look at my time. Is there really that much time left? That seems like a lot of time. All right, we all are getting over Um So I got to um, I got to December, and somewhere in the summer I had started a nonprofit again in faith, saying yes to God. And by December, the Lord had um, asked me to spend two weeks away with Him. And I know a lot of mommies out here are thinking, "How the heck did you do that?" Well, I didn't have anybody, which pros and cons. But I didn't talk to anyone, no internet, no television, no anything, and um, so I talked to mom because you know she would freak out. She didn't hear from me. So for two weeks, I spent time with the Lord, and I was asking for breakthrough. I was asking for answers. I was asking for what's next, and I got nothing. After two weeks, I got nothing. I got a lot of, hey, this is all the stuff we went through this summer. And so I was like, all right, well, that's all right, Lord, no breakthrough. Okay. Well, a week after that, I got a phone call from a girlfriend who was about 41 and still single. And she was just telling me her heart and grieving and trusting God and grieving. And I started looking on the Internet for something that would say, um, here's a piece of encouragement for you. And what I found was there was great articles everywhere and spattering here and there. But there wasn't one place where singles over 30, specifically over 30, could come to receive the encouragement that they needed, to receive freedom. I'm huge on freedom. Like, just, I've been so set free from Jesus that I see how much people need freedom. Freedom from rejection, freedom from shame, from depression, all these things. Because when you're over 30, girls, we've got some baggage that needs to go that has been with us for way too long, whether you're married or single. And so I just started realizing what some of the needs were, and then I kind of tucked it away. And over Christmas break, the Lord really showed me that he wanted me to start an online magazine for Christian singles over 30. And it's called Single Matters. But at that time, y'all, I blog like once a month, okay? I'm a terrible blogger. Do not look at my, will you look at my blog? I mean, it's easy to get through. It's like one article a month, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I thought, Lord, who am I to do this? Like, you know, there's these women that are great at this. And it's a contributor blog. So um, I, you know, started here. I said, yes, Lord, I'll do it. I have no money. I don't know how I'm going to build a website. And I started heading towards the Canaanites in the land, and I'm like, who's going to build a website? Who's going to do the, the logo? Who's going to pay for the trademark? Who's going to edit? Who's going to do the photos? Oh my gosh, I don't know what SEO is, and social media makes me crazy, and I don't really care that much about promoting myself, and that just I just want to spend time with you, because I spent time with them all summer, that's all I cared about. And so as I looked at the famine, and I looked at the lack, fear came into my heart, I forgot who I was, I forgot what God said that I was, and all of a sudden I was stuck right back here, and I was heading towards here, and I was like, no, 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 I've done this before. I'm going to build an altar of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you that you're going to send money. I don't know where it's coming from, but I thank you. Maybe you're sending my husband, amen. No, you know, just whatever. <laughs> he's rich, and he's going to pay for everything. It's going to be great. It didn't happen yet. Um, if anyone knows anyone, but um, free. Um, I'm expensive. <laughs> picture in your mind, because I'm offering him all this. I'm saying, thank you, you're going to provide an editor. I mean, I'm saying crazy stuff I don't even believe. Thank you for my editor, who's actually sitting right there. Thank you for the web designer, and I'm thanking him for all this stuff. And he says, chill. Okay, imagine a castle. And I want all of you to picture yourself in this story. Huge castle, and I'm the king, and I own everything. And you're my daughter, and I call you to me. I say, come here, daughter, I have an assignment for you. And he says, see that land over there? That land is strayed from me. They don't know they're in the kingdom anymore. They don't even know. They are, but they don't know it. I need you to go there, and I need you to share with them how awesome I am and how much I love them. Go do that. Does the daughter say to him, but are you going to feed me? Like, are you going to put shelter over my head? Are you, well, who's going to go with me to help fight the battle? She doesn't. She doesn't. That doesn't even cross her mind because she knows her daddy, and she knows he's good. Of course he's going to feed her. Of course he's going to make sure she has shelter. Of course she's going to, he's going to make sure she's got other people to fight the battle. He's, we are not soldiers. We are. But we're not, and we're not just friends, although we are. We are daughters of the king. We are daughters. Anything that he tells you to do, you will accomplish. Anything he tells you to do. It doesn't matter. If he tells you to do it, you will accomplish it. 
So cool. So I started Single Matters, and I freaked out a lot. Okay, I was at the top looking down at the roller coaster, freaking out a lot. And um, between January and June, we built Single Matters. A friend of mine within the first week said, I'll build a website and do the logo for free. Editor came, photo photographers, 20 contributors. All this, I mean, donations now coming in. Every month, I don't know how I'm paying my bills, but I'm having a blast with God. He's so faithful. So the three things, you just need to say yes to God. You need to embrace who you are in God. You need to go at the pace of God. And if you want to know what um, that really looks like, just really quickly, five things. Keep doing what you do really, really well. Just keep doing what you do well. Whatever it is, just like Mary said, just focus on tending that part of the garden. Just whatever that is, do it well. Second thing, prepare as well as you can to walk into your promise. Whatever the Lord has told you to do, just start preparing. If he told you to write a book, write one chapter. If he told you to start a blog, just start looking at, you know, WordPress templates. Stop other blogs. I did that a lot. Um, third, help others especially those who can't pay you back. Specifically, look for someone who can't pay you back. Look for someone that you can support what they're doing. Do it for free. Tweet. Share on social media. Tell your friends to share. Promote somebody else. Build relationship. Not because you're networking, you know, not because you want something back, but really ask the Lord who to help and then do it. Fourth, walk in gratitude. I talked a lot about that today. Just, just be crazy in your gratitude. Thank them for stuff that you're freaking out about. Um, and then rehearse your dream. Vision. Have a vision for it. Ask God to give you a picture. And all of this is relationship, right? Like, all of this has to be like, God, tell me, tell me, tell me. I remember at one time, I was kind of questioning things, and the Lord said, Jill, do you think I'm not a good steward? I won't waste anything I've done in you. So, rehearse your dream. I'm just going to close with this. I'm going to close with two things. Um, I just have a warning that something that the Lord just put in my heart. Don't promote yourself too soon. Just be careful. The enemy wants you to fail. Don't promote yourself too soon. Because then you will strive to stay in a place that God never put you in. Don't promote yourself too soon. You will strive to stay in a place that God never put you in. He's for you. And where he's going to put you is way greater than where you can put yourself in. I'm going to close with this, Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than we could ever ask or think. According to the power, this is in 21, according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever, amen. He's going to do far more than we can ask or think. It's going to be for his glory. It's going to be for the church. And what you're doing is generational. It's not just for you. It is for generations like Abraham. He didn't see that Jesus was going to come from this land that he was taking. In faith, all he had to say was, yes, God. So, Lord, I just bless these women that they would say yes to you right now. That the thing that is on their heart right now, that they would commit right now, Lord, to say yes they're saying, yes, Lord. And that when they face those trials and the famine and the Canaanites and the land, God, that they would say, you are greater. I'm building an altar as a work of faith to say, I'm taking this land and set a mark, God. And I ask that they trust you, God, with the pace, that you would work out all the things in them that need to go so that they can hold and bear up the greatest work that you plan to do in them. And they would do it with grace, and they would do it with love, and that they would be your love, God, to the earth. Oh, God, thank you so much for this time. I just bless you, ladies. I believe in you. I love you. Thank you.